Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked on Wolves. Today on the show, we're going to talk all about what the Wolves have done well lately. What's most encouraging about this now? Four-game win streak, some impressive road wins, uh, another back-to-back win on Sunday and Monday, and then a huge game Wednesday night in Phoenix. We will preview that later in the show. We'll also look at the Western Conference standings, a bit of ownership news as well. It's a packed show today as we look ahead to Wolves Suns. A huge game Wednesday night. It's all coming to the show. Welcome in. You are Locked on Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beek, and I'm the host of Locked on Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Basketball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebasketballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Hump Day and happy Timberwolves game day. A massive road game against the Phoenix Suns. 9 p.m. also on ESPN Wednesday night. It just doesn't get any bigger. Kevin Durant, by the way, expected to make his return after an extended absence. Uh, It it should be a ton of fun. We will preview that middle of the show here today. I want to start, though, by talking about what's most encouraging about the Wolves' play of late. And and when I say that, yes, the four-game winning streak, and and yes, the big back-to-back wins uh, at Golden State and at Sacramento on Sunday and Monday. But beyond that, really, the last several weeks, there's some trends uh, that the Wolves have have, – have I guess been following. So I want to do all that here to start the show. First though, a big thank you for making lockdown wolves, your first listed every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch the show on the lockdown sports Minnesota app. And that's on both Roku and Amazon fire TV. You can find that app, download it, watch all the other lockdown Minnesota podcasts as well. Again, the lockdown sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon fire TV. You can also follow on Twitter at Lockdown T Wolves and my account, which is at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. All right, let's talk about some some recent trends for the Wolves. Uh, number one, what I find most encouraging over this four game winning streak for the Timberwolves is the different ways that they've won, going all the way back to the Atlanta game, or excuse me, the Knicks game last Monday night. So now nine days ago. Um, each one of these games, the Wolves have done it differently. Like they simply outscored the Knicks. Uh, the Hawks game was a bit of a battle, but they did enough at the end defensively. Uh, they overcame, you know, foul issues. They overcame official frustration, frustration with the officials, et cetera. The Warriors game was uh, more of a slog in terms of it was low scoring, but the Wolves did what they needed to do perimeter defense wise. They didn't get a ton of scoring from Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. But they got clutch play from both of those guys, especially from Cat, clutch defense from Ant, and in a super you know down Jade McDaniel's game, they got some big defensive possessions from him. They got a lot from Kyle Anderson. Like they they did it differently then too. And then the Sacramento game flipped back to more of an offensive battle. But as much as the Wolves struggled at the free throw line, they were so good in so many other places that they were able to kind of uh, combat that. They won the three-point battle. Um, they were uh, effective enough on the glass. They Yes, they fouled a lot, but when they weren't fouling, they were playing pretty good defense in general. And this was another game with no Carl Anthony Towns, a modest Anthony Edwards game, so they leaned again into Nas Reed and Jaden McDaniels. It just, it's just a little bit different every time out, and that's the mark. I think that's one of the telltale signs of a solid, a really good team. They're not entirely star-dependent, and it's crazy because... You look at this roster when fully healthy, and you have three players that could all argue that they're all NBA talent. You know, two of them have been all NBA players. Ant probably won't be this year, but he's not too far away from being an all NBA player. They have three guys who are all stars on this roster Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Anthony Edwards. Yet, no single one of the three of them, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like if you were to pick the headline for the last four wins, those three guys are not the headline. I mean, I think Towns, he got some love on the Sunday game. I used him as the headline for a couple of the of the Lockdown Wolves shows because he hit the clutch shot, right? He hit that clutch three-pointer. But he wasn't the best player on the floor for the Wolves in that game. And Ant, Cat, 
and Rudy. None of those guys. Now, Ant's only played in two of the last four. Cat's only played in two of the last four. But none of them would be the headliners as the best player on the floor for the Wolves in any of those four games, I don't believe. McDaniels would be in the mix. Nas Reed would be in the mix. Kyle Anderson would certainly be in the mix. Mike Conley's had a couple of nice games in there. It That's a really good sign because we all know that when Ant is, of course, Ant had the ankle. He's had an illness. Something's off with him. It could be both of those things. But he's actually, we'll talk more about this later. He's actually played pretty well the last two games, in my opinion. Like, the numbers don't pop off the page. He's, again, not the headliner. But it's been a solid all-around game, and especially Monday in Sacramento. I thought Ant's shot selection was good. I thought he made the right decisions, by and large, in that game. So we know that Ant's going to come back around when he does get healthy, when he does start feeling better from his illness, when his ankle gets right. And maybe that's just playing on it more or whatever. But I think I think we, we know that's going to come around. At some point, we would expect Carl Tony Towns to find something of a rhythm. Of, we don't know how long that'll take after he missed, you know, what, four months, the better part of four months. Um, so you're not worried about those guys. Rudy's kind of been, you know, he's been progressively improving over the course of the season, but he dominates the game in different ways, right? He dominates, actually kind of did dominate the glass the other night against Sacramento. Like he's been doing a lot more of that lately. I want to talk about team rebounding too, by the way. Uh, but to have the Nas Reeds, the Jade McDaniels, Jalen Noel in the fourth quarter against the Kings, uh, moments for Torian Prince, moments for Mike Conley, certainly Kyle Anderson, his his four by five on Sunday in Golden State, his near triple double seemingly every other game. Um, those are the types of guys that you need to have have standout performances when your best players are not playing like their best players. And, and to be clear, Ant and Cat have played well in their returns from their respective injuries. Like, I thought they've played well in general. They just haven't played to that all NBA, like, hey, I'm the best player on the floor level. And that's okay when the other guys are stepping up because if they're not, the Wolves right now would be on the outside looking in or at best case be in the play. But they've gotten contributions from their non-star players, and that is so important. At the same time, you need guys in those roles that know their role and know that, like, hey, I'm not going to be the guy to score 20 a night, McDaniels, Nas Reed, et cetera. But I can be if you need me to be. And those guys have stepped up as needed here over the last several weeks and, and and I guess more recently the last few days. Another thing that's extremely encouraging about the Wolves play lately is their defensive rebounding. Um, I talked about this on the show the other day. The Wolves have slowly been inching. You look at the season-long numbers. They were 28th, 29th for a long time in defensive rebound rate. They're now up to 26th. It's been inching upward. They've been, they've been battling on the glass. Um, hat tip to Alan Horton, the uh, the voice of the Wolves on the radio, and actually uh, several years ago, the host of this podcast, the Lockdown Wolves podcast, um, he had on Twitter on uh, Tuesday evening, he said, don't look now, but the Wolves have started to rebound. The first 21 weeks of the season, the Wolves were 27th in defensive rebound rate, 69.8%. The last two weeks, they're at 75.9%, which is the second best defensive rebound rate in the entire league over the last two weeks. Cat's only been back for two of those games and his rebound numbers have been small. Um, it's not simply cat. Now I would argue a big part of it is Mike Conley in place of D'Angelo Russell. Their individual numbers are not all that different. Conley is not that much better of a, of an individual rebounder than D'Angelo Russell by the numbers, but the impact of Conley always being in the mix, crashing the glass, tipping balls, uh, you know, tipping loose balls, just being active. He's much better in that regard than D'Angelo Russell. There's no question about that. Um, Nikhil Alexander Walker's active. I, I would argue that in general, the team simply has, has shown more dedication to trying to get loose balls and any possessions via defensive rebound than they did in the first, uh, I don't know, call it five months of the season. I, and that's really what rebound it is, right? It's outworking the other team. Size helps. The Wolves have that. Athleticism helps. The Wolves mostly have that. Um, and, and technique obviously matters too, but it's all about want to like go back to whatever, whatever coach taught you that in elementary school, middle school, high school, like it's all rebound is all about who wants it more. And the wolves have been showing that lately. I think it's a credit to the players themselves for being dedicated to that, for knowing that they have a chance to, to be, a, they're not close to scratching their ceiling as a team credit to the coaching staff for continue to stress this as, as really important. Um, certainly opponent matters a little bit too, but like there was a long track record, five plus months of this being a bad defensive rebounding team and things really are starting to flip there. Um, and, and again, having Carl Day Towns is going to help 
teams are having to send two guys to Rudy Gobert. The biggest difference to me is how well Rudy has played lately, how active he's been on the glass, balls he's getting to that he simply was not in November. Using his size to his advantage, his, uh, like, this isn't a rebounding play, but go back to when he sealed Draymond Green in Golden State on Sunday. That led to the free throw. He missed one and made one, but it cut the lead from two to one and then led to the possession where Kyle Anderson gets the steal leading to the cat trail three. Cat feeds Rudy Gobert because Gobert completely sealed Draymond Green under the basket. Draymond had no choice but to foul Rudy. Those are the plays we did not see from Rudy Gobert early this season. Tipping balls, offensive rebounds, putbacks are, are back for Rudy. Um, just more offensive activity, and I think there's a comfort level too, but I, like I don't know if it's comfort level, if it's playing himself back into post-Eurobasket shape or starting to feel better after that, or if it's just simply he's playing better and harder now. I don't know what it is, but Rudy's activity level has been a huge reason for that defensive rebound uptick for the for the Wolves as an entire team. Um, I think that's all I want to cover here. I mean, like I talked about Jaden, I talked about Nas. Uh, I, I should also say Carl Anthony Towns. I mentioned he's played well in his return. He hit that big shot Sunday. He's generally played well. He hit those big free throws against Atlanta, but he's not ball stopping. And Chris Finch talked about this the other day to the media about how they need Towns to make sure he's playing in the flow of the offense, that he's comfortable passing the ball and not just simply stopping the ball and playing ISO or, or you know pump fake and drive and all the stuff he's so good at, but to do it within the flow of the offense. Thought the Wolves did a good job of trying to get him involved, running more kind of uh, mid-post actions where Towns was creating. We're going to see more and more and more of that. And as long as Cat commits to keeping moving the ball and not being a ball stopper, and same thing for Ant once he kind of knocks some more of that rust off, because, again, rusty but effective is how I would describe Anthony Edwards over the last two games. I mean, look out. There's This is this is this could very well be the offense we were expecting to see at the start of the season, but Mike Conley's a better fit than D'Angelo Russell. I mean, he just is. And, and that we're starting to see that, starting to see it round into shape. All right. Next, I actually want to preview the Suns-Wolves matchup for Wednesday night. We'll do that next. We'll close the show by taking a peek at the standings in the Western Conference, The you know what's on tap for the Wolves schedule-wise, uh, playoff matchups, et cetera, and then also a little bit of ownership news related to Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez. So we're going to do all that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is the coolest game that I've played in a long time. I've always thought that I could be a great NBA GM. I really do. As it turns out, it isn't all that easy. If you've had some, if you've had the same thought and have fantasized about managing your own basketball franchise, go and download Ultimate Pro Basketball GM right now. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for everything, dealing with challenging personalities, both players and coaches, hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency, the draft, etc. All this is in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball is completely, excuse me, Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want to, when you want to. We have a Locked on NBA host league, and you better believe it's competitive. Uh, there's a lot of hosts, I don't know, myself speaking for some other, uh, I guess, Wobegon franchises, Sacramento, Detroit, a uh, handful of these franchises who have had, uh, we'll call it some challenges in recent years. Those hosts are a little bit more, uh, I would say, passionate about having success in this game. And uh, that certainly comes through in the Locked on NBA host league. Locked on Wolves listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked on in the game store. Make sure to check it out. Download the game by visiting probasketballgm.com. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you can scan the code in the corner where you can look it up on the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, let's talk Wolves Suns. Uh, so the Timberwolves and Suns have played three times this season. Phoenix won the first two matchups pretty easily. The first one in Phoenix, the second one in Minnesota. Cat played in both those. That's all the way back in November. Uh, Chris Paul only played in one of the two. And of course, the Suns after the Kevin Durant trade look very different than they did in November. Now, uh, the most recent game these teams played, the Wolves did win. There was no Carl Anthony Towns, no Kevin Durant. Um, and like, I don't know. I don't know how much to really pull from those for those other games, right? When the Wolves won by five, this was mid-January. Uh, the Timberwolves did not have Carlton Towns. They still had D'Angelo Russell. The Suns, I mean, like, 
they were led in scoring by Mikel Bridges at 24. Uh, I'm sorry. Mikel Bridges at 24 in the starting lineup. Damian Lee had 31 points off the bench. Um, John Rayton did play, but there was no Chris Paul. There was no Devin Booker in that game. Obviously, no Kevin Durant. Um, just a very different, a different game. For what it's worth, though, the Wolves won by five. It was a game that they led for much of it. They're actually up by 15 at halftime, but let Phoenix get back into it in the fourth quarter. The Wolves were led by 31 from Ant. He shot 50% from the field. Remember, he scored, what, 40-plus in Phoenix last year, I guess two years ago. Prince had 16 off the bench for the Wolves. Uh, the Wolves did uh, lose the rebound battle by six. They didn't shoot the ball well from the perimeter. They allowed Phoenix to shoot 61% from three, and Phoenix also shot 24 free throws in that game. To me, the biggest concerns about this matchup, obviously Kevin Durant's return. He's expected to come back um, for Phoenix in this game. Um, and he is such a like bigger picture, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, D Kevin Durant, like I, those are three of the best mid range jump shooters of this generation. Right. <laughs> like, and they're all on the same team. Um, and Phoenix can still shoot threes, right? They're 20th and three point rate, which is low, but they're seventh in percentage. So when they take them, they make them. Um, now, of course, again, the makeup of this team is very different than it was like these season long stats aren't aren't exactly perfect because of the changes. We also haven't seen, you know, what Durant played three games in a son's uniform. So we don't have a lot of data on what, what this actually looks like. Just how teams don't have a lot of data on a healthy wolf squad with Mike Conley, no D'Angelo Russell. Like things are different. Things are very different now for both these squads than they were uh, in the other, the previous three matchups. One thing that uh, will change the Suns are 27th in offensive free throw rate, or excuse me, 28th in offensive free throw rate. They don't get to the line a lot. That's going to change with Kevin Durant on the team. I mean, Durant and Booker are each going to get to the line, you know, six plus times a game. Nobody else in this team will get there three times uh, in, in a game on average. So it's all Booker. It's all Durant. It's a lot of mid range jumpers. Um, Durant, obviously those guys can shoot threes, like uh, just a lot of jumpers. These guys are not going to get into the paint a ton. Um, you still got to deal with DeAndre Ayton, of course. And, and so that's a challenge for Rudy Gobert. Although Rudy had a couple of solid games against them earlier this season. In fact, the first game between the two teams, Rudy had only seven points, was 0 of 1 shooting. All of his scoring came at the free throw line. Game two, when the Wolves lost by 12, Gobert led the Wolves in scoring. He had 25 and 11. Um, and DeAndre Ayton played in that game, only had nine and six. So kind of flip-flopped, you know, a, a dominant Ayton game, a bad Gobert game, and then it flipped. But the Suns won both those games. The last time out, Gobert was quiet again, had only one field goal attempt against Phoenix, scored four points, had 12 boards, and Aiton had 11 and 11. So they kind of, you know, Aiton certainly had a better game. Um, but it's been feast or famine for Rudy against the Suns. Be interesting to see, again, what we talked about last segment, how much better Rudy's been playing of late and what that might look like uh, for him against Phoenix in this game. I really don't know, you know, with Kevin Durant, obviously Jaden McDaniels will guard Durant do his best to stay out of foul trouble, which is going to be really hard to do. It's hard for Jaden in general. It's hard for anyone guarding Durant to do Durant. Assuming he's got full mobility and starting and the whole thing coming off the injury. That's such a tough assignment for anybody. Uh, but that'll be Jaden's job in this game. The Suns as a team, they do basically everything well offensively, except for draw fouls. And again, this was pre Durant Suns drawing, not drawing fouls. They're sixth in offensive rebound rate. They're 10th in turnover rate. They don't turn it over. Uh, they grab second chance points. They don't get to the line a ton. They shoot when they shoot threes, they make them. Um, and that's why this team is, is uh, such a good offensive team. They're actually middle of the pack offensive rating wise. Um, but they, they, the ceiling, like really the sky's the limit for this offense. Defensively, the Suns are one of the few teams that actually allows more free throws than the Timberwolves do. They're dead last in opponent free throws per field goal attempts. The Suns are. Um, so the Wolves have been better at getting to the line lately. Ant did a good job going to the going to the basket. Jade McDaniels has been doing that more more of late. The Wolves should be able to get to, get to the line against the Suns. I don't know that it'll be a, a free throw parade like the what seventy four combined free throws. I think it was the Wolves and Kings shot in Sacramento on Monday night. But this could be a high free throw game, uh, and normally that does not favor the Wolves. It might in this game. It might because uh, now, of course, Phoenix shoots them better than the Wolves. The Wolves we talked about this the other night. The Wolves have been the league's worst free throw shooting team going back almost three months now. They're for the season. They're like 28th. The Suns are 10th in percentage. So um, you got to be careful there. But the Wolves, the Wolves, if they could defend largely without fouling, they should be able to get to get to the line themselves. 
Now, the Suns are a good defensive team. They're also a really good rebounding team in general. So I would say rebounding is probably the number one key. Number two is defending without fouling, especially against Durant and Devin Booker. Uh, try and force the Suns to take shots they don't want, which I guess you could say any night. But if Phoenix gets to their spots, like you're not, they're not going to miss mid-range jumpers. They're not going to miss open threes. This is such a dynamic shooting team. You got to get in their jersey, make them feel uncomfortable, like the Wolves did, uh, really against anybody that wasn't Darren Fox on Monday against the Kings. The Wolves did it against everyone that wasn't Jordan Poole on Sunday against the Warriors, and at times they did well against Poole. But the combination of McDaniel's and uh, Torian Prince is questionable with an illness, but if he plays, Nikhil Alexander Walker, um, Mike Conley, if they could defend like they did generally against the Warriors and Kings, the Wolves could win this game. They absolutely could win this game. And if they do, we'll talk about this next, but the Wolves will have a real shot, a real shot at the fourth seed in the Western Conference. I'll explain why. And they won't have the tiebreaker directly over the Suns because if they win, they'll split the season series. But I want to talk standings next, a quick ownership note. Um, and uh, that's how we'll close the show here today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at FanDuel. The college basketball tournament is down to the final four teams championship early next week. There's no better place to get in on the action this weekend than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything for the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the nets. All that is on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right, Wolf Suns is a gigantic game on Wednesday. We can say that about all the last six games, but let me break this down real quickly. Right now, the Timberwolves have the tiebreaker over. They're, the Wolves are currently in six. They have the tiebreaker over the Clippers, who are in fifth. The Warriors, who are in, uh, excuse me, they tied with the Warriors, who are in seventh. They're tied at the Pelicans in eighth. They also have it over the Lakers in ninth, Thunder in tenth, Mavericks in eleventh, Jazz in twelfth. Minnesota has a tied uh tiebreaker, if you will, tied season series against the Kings, tied against the Warriors. Sitting here right now, the Timberwolves actually would have the tiebreaker over the Warriors, which is why they're in sixth, because the second tiebreaker is conference record. And the Wolves are two and a half games better in the conference. Golden State, as I'm recording this, is actually playing. They're losing to New Orleans. So if they lose that, the Wolves will have a three-game lead in that tiebreaker against Golden State. So I, I, would, I would say comfortably, because obviously if the Warriors uh, win and the Wolves lose you know, later this week, then it flips. But the Wolves will, and also, I guess, at this point, if the Warriors lose, the Wolves will be an actual half game up on them in the standings. So they'll be alone in sixth place in the West. If the Wolves beat the Suns, uh, I guess, depending on what the Clippers do, but say the Clippers lose Wednesday, if the Wolves beat the Suns, the Wolves would jump the Clippers. If the Clippers lose, the Wolves would jump the Clippers and be only a half game behind the Suns, plus they would have the tiebreaker because the season series would be split and the Wolves would have a a two-game advantage in, in in terms of conference record. The Wolves will have played three more conference games than Phoenix, or sorry, two more conference games, but they will have won both of them, plus this head-to-head -head matchup uh, on Wednesday in this play in this scenario out. So the Wolves will be a half game behind, plus have the tiebreaker over the Suns in the fourth spot. So it's such a big game. Every game is huge. After this game, the only other potential playoff team the Wolves are going to play is the Brooklyn, or well, the Nets and then the Lakers. The Lakers are under 500, but the last five games are very winnable for Minnesota. There's a Pelicans game in there. There's a Spurs game in there. Uh, I forget who, maybe the Rockets or something. There's a very another very winnable game. Um, but they cannot look past this Suns game and, and think like, hey, it's going to get easier. Now, the Wolves have played to their competition for the vast majority of the season. Lately, that's been a really good thing because they've had a tough schedule. Wednesday is a really tough game. National TV, last game of the road trip at Phoenix. Phoenix is getting to ramp back. They've won a couple in a row. The Wolves have won four in a row. Like the setup is perfect. The Wolves need to deliver. And if they do, we can legitimately be talking about the four seed. Like the six is important because you get out of the play in. The four is the next layer, right? Because then you get that first round uh, home court advantage. You get to play game seven at home, to play game one at home, right? 
that matters. And then we could talk matchups. Like obviously anything could happen right now, still with the four and 10 and actually 11 seeds being separated by three and a half games. But if the wolves were in fourth, like there's a good chance you play the Suns, Clippers or warriors in the first round. The Suns are not a good matchup for Minnesota. I think the Clippers are a really good matchup and the warriors actually aren't a bad matchup either. I'm not saying I want to see golden state, but that matchup actually scares me less than say a Suns matchup for Minnesota. Um, it scares me less than, um, well, I don't know. They're not going to face Memphis in the first round, but like Memphis isn't a good matchup for Minnesota as good as that playoff series was. Denver is not a good matchup for Minnesota. So first round matchup wise, the Suns are probably the team I'd be the most scared of. Uh, you can handle the Clippers. You can handle the Warriors. You could, you know, the Pelicans, of course, they're still hot. You know, they get Zion back. Who knows? Um, anyway, that'll be a big topic next week as, as things start to become a little bit less muddy, hopefully. Uh, but at the moment, so many things are possible, and it's just another reason why this Suns matchup is just so important. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is the the ownership news. Uh, this was reported first by Sham Sharania and John Krasinski at The Athletic that uh, Mark Lurie and Alex Rodriguez had completed their second payment uh, for the second 20% stake in the Timberwolves and now own 40% of the team. It was confirmed a little bit later, a statement from Lurie and Rodriguez. Uh, and they confirm that they now have 40% ownership stake in the team. I believe they have until the end of 24. So about a, a year and nine months or so to buy the final, uh, to buy that. Well, actually I think they buy the final 40%. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so the final, yeah. Okay. Here it is. The final stage of the ownership change sees them exercise an option to buy another 40% by the end of this. This says by this year, I'm pretty sure it's 24. I think this, uh, this transcribed article is, uh, is not correct. Um, I believe it's the end of next year and they are on track to, to complete the purchase. The other thing that's interesting, this was uh, reported by the athletic as well, that now Alex Rodriguez has paid more money to own a professional sports team than any other former athlete surpassing Michael Jordan, who bought the Hornets for just $180 million back in 2010. Uh, Rodriguez has now put in more than 200 million of his own money to get to the 40% of owning the Timberwolves. So Interesting stuff there. Not a surprise. It, it does seem there was a little bit of talk last year about the concerns about the liquidity of um, specifically of A-Rod, but it seems like things are really on track. A-Rod's been around the team quite a bit. We've seen him on the road following the team around quite a bit. Uh, pretty exciting to, to see this kind of actually coming to fruition. It's a very real thing. You know, uh, Glenn Taylor was praised by Lorian Rodriguez in their statement again, and it seems like everything's going pretty swimmingly a little bit weirdly smoothly for as far as the Timberwolves go. Right. Um, anyway, so that's good news to be sure. All right. Next up, the Wolves have the Suns on Wednesday and then it's back home. It's back home for, uh, for, uh, the Lakers on Friday night. The last time the Wolves will see the Lakers, they have the tiebreak already against LA, but they play LA Friday night. It's a two game homestand. They take on Portland on Sunday and Portland just shut down Damian Lillard for the season. That's a very winnable game. Portland's not officially eliminated, but they're pretty much out. And then it's on the road to Brooklyn three days off consecutively next week before going to San Antonio and then closing at home with a Sunday matinee against the Pelicans, who at the moment are winners of five straight. The uh, Lakers and Pelicans games loom as, you know, potential playoff opponents, teams that are trying to get out of the play in or, or cement their position in the play in. Um, so it's not an easy schedule. It's just a little bit easier than it has been recently. And again, this season, that hasn't always been a good thing for the Wolves. So we'll see how that all goes. We'll go live once again after Wolf Suns. Uh, it'll be late, so probably after midnight. It will be after midnight, almost certainly central time uh, Wednesday night on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. And uh, be sure to subscribe to that so you know when Marnie Gellner from Valley Sports North, when her and I go live, you'll be notified. We'll also post the audio if that's too late for you to watch it live. You can listen. The Actually, uh, I guess it would be two episodes ago on this feed uh, was the live postcast recorded uh, from the game against the Kings. So be sure to check that out after the fact, if you miss it live, uh, we won't go live on Friday or Sunday um, actually. So uh, there will be a couple games where we aren't able to go live, but this Wednesday we will after the Phoenix game. So be sure to, uh, to tune into that on lockdown sports, Minnesota on YouTube, a big thank you to those of you that do make lockdown wolves, your first listen each and every day. You can also, uh, as I mentioned, watch on our YouTube channel. You can watch this show on lockdown wolves on YouTube. You can also subscribe to your favorite, uh, to lockdown wolves on your favorite audio platform. You can also watch on your Roku or Amazon Fire TV by downloading the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app. You can follow on Twitter at Lockdown T-Wolves or at B Beacon 
And that's with two B's, two E's, CK, E-N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Now make your second listen, the Game to Game NBA podcast. Every moment, every top performance, and every result. Lockdown Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Lockdown can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Lockdown NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.